I'm in Stirling, Scotland. What is behind me is the Stirling Bridge. And I'm here with my friend Ted Christopher. Hi, Ted. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you for joining me today. Hi, you're very welcome. And the idea of this video, it was like to tell you about the connection between our lyrics, the lyrics in Skiltron, and places like this, which are like a very important for Scotland and his history. Very much. Um, if it wasn't for places like this in particular, and Bannockburn, which is just a few miles up the road, there wouldn't be a Scotland. You know, this is where we, uh, we reaffirmed by winning two battles that we were going to stay as a nation and that we wanted to be a nation on our own. When I start about thinking about um, founding a skill drone, yeah, I wrote a song called Stirling Brick and this song was wrote about 2000, even before 2000, I will say 98, 99. Okay. Even before, years before, I was in Scotland for the first time. And at that time I wrote songs like Beside Still and Bridge, like Gathering the Clans. Yeah. And they were all part of our first album, which was uh, The Clans Have United in 2006. Before that we had a demo, which those songs were part of. And I don't know, this place for me, even I told you, before even I was here for the first time, I felt like something which I don't know, if I can even explain. And it's funny because, you know, many times, many people ask me like, why you are writing about all those topics? Like, you are from Argentina and nothing to do with this. It's like, just I found something that I like. Yeah. I like the history. I like to be, I like to write songs about that. So why not? It's just what I like. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, a, it's amazing how many people come here and uh, they have uh, an affinity with the history here that they just they can't explain you know it's, uh, they come to Scotland and it's uh, whether or not they have Scottish ancestry they, they fall in love with the country uh, and with it being big headed they fall in love with the people of Scotland um, and just they want to be a little part of it which is fantastic it's a great compliment to our, our country and should I say that years after that for our latest album at the moment, Legacy of Blood, we did a cover version of a song called I'm Coming Home, oh, which yeah. it was written by Ted. <laughs> so I remember we first met, I thought it was in Wallace Day in 2013. Yeah. Yeah, we, we played there together. Yeah. And we knew about that song and the background of the song, the meaning of the song, what it was written for. And we decided that we wanted to do, do a cover version of that song. Um, yeah, that's a huge compliment. And can you please tell me about the, um, the origin of the song, uh, why you did that song, what was the purpose of it? Um, well, it was all due to a, a guy called Davy Ross, who was a, at that time the convener of the Society of William Wallace. Um, Davy was a, a huge character in every sense, um, massive sort of presence. Uh, when he decided he was going to do something and he asked you if you would do something to help that. You very quickly got to realise it wasn't really a question. It was, this is what you're doing to help. And and that wasn't in any sort of nasty sense. It was just his, his enthusiasm. And, and everybody bought into it. Uh, so David decided on the 700th anniversary of Wallace's execution, he was going to walk from uh, where Wallace was captured, the Rob Royston, to where he was executed in London, uh, in the same time scale that Wallace was taken, but obviously Wallace was taken on horse. Um, but David managed to do that, uh, and it was called the Walk for Wallace. And there was about a thousand of us went down to London, and David had arranged uh, a funeral service for Wallace because when Wallace was killed, he was everybody's seen Braveheart. And probably the most accurate part is the end. Um, when Wallace was killed, he was hung, drawn and quartered. Uh, the reason for that was not just to, uh, to give somebody a horrific death, but they, they believed that if somebody didn't have an intact body, they couldn't pass into the afterlife. Uh, so that coupled with the fact they didn't have any chance to have any sort of Christian burial, uh, meant that 
as far as they were concerned, they'd, they'd left Wallace in limbo. Um, it didn't work, because if you go throughout Scotland, there are statues of Wallace throughout Scotland. Uh, what they did was they made him a martyr and a national hero in Scotland. Uh, but on 20, was it 5th August? 5th August was caught, 23rd August he was uh, executed. Um, on that day in 2005, we gave him a Christian funeral service. Uh, and the church right next to where he was murdered. Smithfield. Yes, yeah, Smithfield. And it's, um, that church was actually standing on that day. It's an ancient church. And we believed that we brought his spirit back home to Scotland with us. So the song I'm Coming Home is all about uh, Wallace's spirit coming back to Scotland. And people say it's uh, fantasy. You can say that. Uh, in 2005, Scotland, I think, had three SNP MPs at the time. Uh, now uh, we've got our own parliament. We've not got our own nation back yet, but we're we're well on the we're way. Here. <laughs> so it's um, yeah, certainly, certainly, some of us were well inspired by the fact that we feel that Wallace is back with us again. That's awesome, mate. And um, going back to this place in particular, yeah. Um, it's like uh, amazing about the story of the of the battle itself, like how it was perfectly planned. Oh, like a, I will try to make a, a brief recap of the battle. So obviously, this is not the original bridge. This is a it's still an old bridge, but it's not century. all right. But it's not the original wooden bridge that no. was. Um, when it's, it was, the, the battle took place. Yeah. So, again, tell me if I'm not accurate with any of the facts. So basically, the English army was advancing from here, from the south yeah. side, is that okay, correct? Sure. And the Scottish army, it was waiting there, but not, they were not at sight. They were like hidden, is that? Um, yes, to a certain extent that's correct. Most of them were hidden, uh, as far as we can make out. Uh, what we do know as an absolute fact was that on the other side was complete marsh. Yes. And there was a causeway which went from where the, the bridge came ashore uh, to the, the Abbey Craig, which is where the Wallace Monument now stands. Um, and that causeway was only wide enough for horses and carts. You know, so the English, of course, didn't realise that and sent their knights across the bridge. Uh, and they couldn't come off the causeway. And horrible but medieval battles, the Scots would just kill the horses. You know, so the knights fell off into the marsh wearing heavy armour. Um, and it was, you can't fight in the marsh with heavy armour on against somebody who's just yeah. lightly, lightly armoured and uh, just looking to find wee chinks in your armour to poke a sword then. So when the rest of the English were were here waiting for them to cross and they saw that they tried to somehow rush to the other side yeah. and that was what made the bridge collapse is that right um plus the, local plus the ones that they were trying to come back actually the local belief is that um that wallace and the murray as you can see here there's two of them um who are the co-commanders of the scottish army uh, deliberately uh, set about uh, sabotaging the bridge beforehand uh -huh. um, and when the English army was half across um, particularly when the, the cavalry was across because they were useless yeah. you know um, and probably before they allowed the infantry to come across who could have fought in the marshland um, they collapsed the bridge so the cavalry were stranded over there which was in a, in a conventional battle was their, their main force uh, and all the rest of them had to stand on this side and just watch. Um, the river at that time was uh, much wider and uh, the banks have been built up a bit since then uh, and it wasn't a, a bank where uh, it was like this is the bank, that's the river. It just gradually got boggier as it went down towards the, the river. So they were standing there just helpless watching their cavalry getting slaughtered across the other side.
I am now in the other side of the bridge and with me is my good friend George from the William Wallace Society. Thank you George for being here You're with me today. Welcome. You're very welcome, mate. good to see you. So before we tell, I was talking about uh, someone coming home and what it was written for and we were talking about David. Yeah, David. So I, I know he was a very good friend of you. Mm -hmm. I never had the chance to meet him, unfortunately. You missed the trick. Yes, um, but I know he, this was also a very special place for him. Yeah. Um, you know, in our album, Into the Battleground, we did a song called On the Trail of David Ross. David Ross. Because I should say that I got the idea, maybe very obvious, because he has like a series of book called yeah. On the Trail of William Wallace, On the Trail of Robert the Bruce. Charlie. Yeah. That's right. So he, I, al he also wrote a, a great book. It was called Desire Lines, and it was basically just a travel log of all the historic sites in Scotland. It's for everything, but especially ones that meant a lot to David. So you can also, if you get that book, you can go yes. on the trail of David Abs David R. Ross. You know, Abs so absolutely. Uh, I have a few of them, um, but yeah, going back to the song, um, I remember meeting his daughter. On the when we play when we play on the um, Wallace Day, yeah, Eldersley. In Eldersley, right? And I remember that uh, me and the rest of the band we were there and we met her and we told her that uh, we did this with uh, with respect mm -hmm. and it was like a or little tribute to him. Even we never got the chance to meet him, but uh, I hope that that was uh, appreciated. But the. Oh, yeah. The society. The society. Well, I mean, you, you couldn't get a better compliment. Somebody, you know, kind of putting down in words what what it meant to them. And I know David would have got a real kick out of it because uh, I'm sure Ted would agree with me. Uh, David didn't mind getting told how good he was. You know, he kidded on. He was modest, but um, to get a song written for him by you guys, he would have loved it. Absolutely loved it. And the society. I mean, we took it as a compliment at, uh, to David. We didn't look on it as being cheesy or anything like that. And best of all, it was a really good song. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Thank you, mate. You're very welcome. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because you paid me. <laughs> well, not too much. <laughs> so going back to the history of this place, I know that this is uh, very important for the society. Uh, you participate every year in the um, Steel and Brick March. That yes, you, you uh, do this commemoration, yeah. So can you tell me about that a little bit? Well, it's basically just something we hold, uh, we hold every year, and it's it's down to our good friend Ted Christopher who organises it. We he we help where we can, so do some other people, and it's just we come here the closest date to. In fact, it was only a couple of weeks ago, and we come along, usually a pipe band, kilts, music. Uh, we have a Kelly after it, although that's it's got slightly since COVID, it's got a wee bit smaller. Uh, but hopefully it'll get back to the the days of 500 people showing up and stuff like that. But COVID kind of killed a lot of the commemorations off. They're still there, they're still getting done. And as long as you remember, it doesn't matter if there's only 10 people. We're still here, we're not going away, we're still doing them. And uh, I think this year was quiet, but it, it was well attended. And uh, long may it continue. It's just one date in the calendar, there's others that we celebrate. You know, Wallace Day and Eldersley, things like that. So it's... Uh, yeah, it's 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 still going on, you know. Regardless of what pe some people say, I've think. been I've been here on the celebration a couple of times, and yeah. it was always like uh, very nice to attend to participate. Yeah, it's, it's great just to celebrate being Scottish and to to remember the people that went before us. And you're also here. It's a you know it is technically a gravesite, so you're remembering not just the Scottish people that died. You're remembering the English people as well. So it's it's, it's a very um, it's a very emotional place. And you can feel it, and when you come along, the, the guys that I know that come here, we're all here to say, can I commemorate the battle? That's first and foremost what we do. And it's good to meet folk you don't see maybe the rest of the year. Uh, but there's a, a lot of comradeship, but it's very respectful. You know, we come here to pay respects to the dead, first and foremost. And then if we can go somewhere and sit and have a wee party in their, their kind of memory, then that's even better because people travel a lot of miles to get here. You know, it's not just oh, local yeah. Stirling people. Yeah, well, you've came from Argentina a couple of times, so you can't get any further away than that. So it's all good. It's all... And people say that it was hundreds of years ago. 
So when, when, where's the limit? When do you stop remembering? When do you stop remembering the First World War, Second World War? It was a war with England, you know, and it's still... You've got to remember them. And that's what the Wallace Society and other societies in Scotland tend to do. And uh, Ted, Ted takes care of Stirling for us. And we just need to show up, usually. Uh, and it's, it's a credit to uh, Ted that it's still going, even though it's quieter after Covid, but it's getting there. Everything's coming yeah. back again, which is good to see. The first time I've been in contact with the Wallace Society was in 2010. I was attending the Wallace Day in Eldersley, mm -hmm. and I remember that it was the first time I met Duncan. I, we, we didn't know each other before, so I introduced myself, I gave him a CD, and he was very nice with me. And since then, after that, I mean, we kept in touch, and that's how we ended up playing two years after in yeah, the Wallace Day. Day and I was don't that, know was that the famous acoustic set yeah, yeah. acoustic <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was the first time I met you yeah well, I think it probably was yeah yeah and what what do you remember about that night when the, when you first came on the dry ice started and I just thought oh, here we go I mean that, the biggest majority of us loved it you know it was absolutely fantastic but some of the older guys in the audience were just like what the hell is going on <laughs> But yeah, absolutely superb. And you were that good we got you back. You know, you just, you just well, played again, didn't you? Yeah, and we did we did play again uh, the year after. I even joined 13. you on stage that night. Yeah. yeah. That's true, yeah, I remember yeah, that. I remember that. That was that was a wee highlight for me. There's no many folk can say they played with Skiltron. Yeah. I have. It was actually it was such so different from the, the acoustic sets that we've normally got. And Skelton just came on. Starting because it away. wasn't acoustic at all. Yeah, uh, you lied to me. You lied to me, yeah. But no, it was absolutely fantastic. It was, it was a surprise. Uh, well, yeah, a good surprise. <laughs> but yeah, everybody loved it. It, was, it kind of blew the cobwebs away. Uh, and the, the next, the following year in 2013, there wasn't like, we are not going to say what, how it's right. going to be acoustic because you know what's going yeah. to happen. Yeah, you, you weren't going to lie to us this time, yeah. <laughs> no, it was great to have you. It was a pleasure to have you. And I hope we can do it again someday. Well, we're, this year we're getting the, the Wallace Day and Eldersley is actually, it's the first time we're having a march through Johnston. Uh, the last few years we haven't done that, the numbers didn't justify it. But this year we do have the full pipe band, so slowly but surely they're getting back. And if there's enough interest, we'll start hiring the hall again and uh, get the bands going again. Because everybody, it was, as I say, people travel a lot of miles and to have somewhere where they can go after it, put their feet up, have something to eat, have a wee drink, chat to old friends, it's good. Uh, but it's been so quiet since COVID, but it's coming back. So hopefully watch this space. I will. Thank you, mate. You're very welcome, <laughs> mate. Great to see you. Slange.